Hi friends, Abby here from the Clay Kiosk today to show you how you can sculpt an African fat-tailed gecko. Let's get started. To start, I'm using a little over half a block or one ounce of female polymer clay. For this tutorial, I've also mixed in a small amount of Sahara colored clay to match the gecko's underbelly. Now that I'm happy with the color and have conditioned my clay, I'm rolling my ball into a thick clay snake. Then, with my fingers, I'm indenting where I'd like the tail and the head to be. African fat tails, as the name implies, have bunchy tails and bigger heads, so I'm making them roughly the same size as the belly. With my thumbs, I'm creating a triangular shaped head. Now that I'm happy with the basic shape, I'm finally bending the potty into position. I'm raising the head up about 3 quarters of an inch from my work surface. Excess clay that I've set aside earlier, I'm cutting thin strips for the gecko's tail. For more even pieces, you can use a pasta machine to roll out the clay. After adding a clay strip to the tail, I'm using a dotting tool to smooth the end closest to the end of the tail. needle and silicone tools, I'm smoothing out the work I did with my dotting tool. The smoother the tail, the easier the cleaning and painting processes will be. With extra clay, I'm cutting two equal pieces. These will be the foundation for the front legs. To get a nice leg shape, create upside down L shapes. Make sure that the top portion of the leg has slightly more clay than near the foot. Once you're happy with your legs, add them to your gecko and use a dotting or needle tool to smooth them into the body. Repeat this same process of the front legs with the hind legs. Now that the legs are out of the way, we can begin to detail the face. Cut two small, even pieces of clay and roll them into a ball. Press down on each, flattening them into the shape of a disc. Add them to the sides of the head and use a dotting tool to blend the edges.
By now you may have noticed that the clay has gotten specks of dust on it. I'm taking a minute to clean the gecko's body with a Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol. Now that I'm ready to detail, I will focus my attention back on the eyes. With the dotting tool, I'm creating two large pockets for the eyes to rest in. With my X-Acto knife, I'm carefully outlining the mouth, and I'm using a needle tool to add two small nostrils above the mouth. With my knife, I'm cutting five small toes on each foot. Then, I will do a few finishing touches, like clean my clay again, before I send the figurine to be baked for 60 minutes at about 230 degrees. Now that I'm done sculpting, I'm ready to paint my gecko. For this tutorial, I'm doing a striped morph with mostly shades of brown, but you're free to paint your figurine however you'd like. When painting, it is best to create an outline of where you'd like each color to be. I'm doing so with a needle tool. Now that I have a very basic outline, I'm adding detail to the tail and filling in my squares. Mixing some chocolate brown with the flesh tone colored paint, I'm adding thin stripes to the gecko's back. Then, with the brush, I'm fading this color out toward the underbelly of the gecko. With a Sahara colored paint and some white, I'm mixing the color for the gecko's lower half. I'm also adding the same color to the tops of the legs and around the face. Using the gray-brown I created earlier, I'm adding spots to the sides and feet. I'm content with what I've created, so I'm adding a thin coat of varnish to the figurine to give it a nice shine.
that's it. I hope you enjoyed my first tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see in future videos. If you haven't already, you can also follow me on social media for more behind the scenes photos and videos, as well as information about upcoming shop updates. That is all for now, but I hope to see you next week with another polymer clay tutorial.